What is going on everybody and welcome to an intermediate Python programming tutorial series or maybe better called Python fundamentals that aren't basics anymore. <laughs> okay, so uh, in this tutorial series we're just going to be talking about stuff that I just don't feel like fits anymore in the Python 3 basics tutorial series. In the past I've just kind of added on to that over time, but we're getting to the point where I just don't think it's basics. So first of all, like my definition of basics is at least how I felt when I was doing basics. And that would be like, let's just make this work, right? That was my goal whenever I was first starting out. So I just didn't care that much about uh, efficiency and scaling and stuff like that. I was just trying to learn about the language and make it work. Now with intermediate Python programming, I kind of break these down. There's kind of like three hallmarks or trademarks of uh, intermediate Python programming. And that is one, it's efficient and it scales well because as you grow a project and if the project is successful, it needs to be able to scale. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and pay off a bunch of what's called technical debt, basically. Uh, so you want to be able to scale really well. Also, along those lines, the second thing is just maintainability. So a lot of this is just readability and how easily we can understand it. But also just how well you write your functions and classes and methods and stuff like this that allows you to actually grow over time and improve it because a lot of times you're just going to get to the point where as the project grows and you want to add new things or change things it can become just a huge spider web mess nastiness then finally the third thing is just modularity and so the idea here is that when you you make something your goal should be that Maybe you want to use this in other projects of your own, or maybe other people can make use of the code that you're writing. So you want to make something that's extremely generalizable. Uh, that should be the goal, and that's actually really hard to do. And if you're not always thinking about that, it's really easy to take the short route and sacrifice modularity, but also sacrifice uh, maintainability and even efficiency. But for the most part, scaling and efficiency is more of like a knowledge thing. You just need to know how to do it as opposed to maintainability and modularity. That's more of like a mindset that you really need to have. So one thing I always like to show, I've shown this picture a few times before, but I think it's a really good one is this kind of comic and the idea is that you know you start with a clean slate and then you build your first project and that's just this simple house and then over time as the project grows you want to add these other little things to it and as time goes on it just gets way out of hand everything's just kind of pieced together there was no thought about I mean obviously I guess this is kind of modular um, but it's really difficult for this pro this kind of project to scale when you're just kind of gluing things together and again it's more of like a mindset when you're writing things, especially we're going to be talking, um, basically this series will start with just some standard library and standard functionality of Python that, again, just isn't basic. And then we're going to get into object-oriented programming. Uh, and so as you build, let's say, uh, your classes and stuff like that, it's, like a, it's more of like a mindset when you have to think about, okay, how could I use this in the future and how can I grow this in the future? And so... Um, a good test of that is just to basically have it in a separate file. So I'm usually not somebody who's a big fan of making these huge packages, but at least the first time you're building a class that can actually help out. But we'll talk more on that as we go. Also in terms of maintainability, I will just point to PEP8. PEP8 is a style guide. No, it's not style Bible for Python code. It's not it's not dogmatic. It's just a, it's more of like a suggestion more than anything else. If you don't feel very strongly about something, use whatever Pep8 says. Or if uh, uh, a lot of times you might work in teams, like for example, uh, Google has their own style guide. So if you go to work for Google, you're there's some differences between Google's version of styling and Pep8. But for the a large part, uh, people generally follow the same practices, and we'll try to adhere. Uh, a decent amount to PEP8, but there are certain things I just fundamentally disagree with uh, with PEP8 on. Uh, just for one quick example will be line length. 79 characters just feels unbelievably arbitrary, and it encourages you to have like really short or uh, like a short function names and short variable names that aren't descriptive, aren't readable, and also to uh, neglect 
sometimes having like if especially like when you've got a function and you're actually going to use that function um, sometimes it's not clear what that parameter is just by the variables name so you kind of want to have the parameters name equals variable name but if you're trying to not not exceed 79 characters it's really easy oh we'll just chop off the parameter and equals and boom we're, we're good that's that's pep8 that's right right um i don't i disagree with that and there's a few other things in pep8 i just i, I just feel like come on guys but but anyway um we'll we'll do a lot of things like naming conventions we're gonna follow and stuff like that so pep8 read through it uh it's it's a good read regardless it's something to think about Next, uh, we're going to bring up uh, Python shell. Uh, let me make it large. And probably, in my opinion, more important than PEP8 is the Zen of Python. You should just always kind of have this in your mind. So you can just do import this. And this is kind of the, Z the Zen of Python. Um, and basically, just kind of always be thinking of these things. So, you know, I'm not going to read this all to you, but beautiful is better than ugly is one that pretty much everybody violates. Uh, simple is better than complex is one that has unbelievably um, complicated ramifications. Um, so maybe we'll show some examples of that. Flat is better than nested is also usually very complex and or complicated. So a lot of these things are, are contradictory in practice, practice but um, it is something to always kind of think about and try to make your code adhere, I would say adhere more to the Zen of Python uh, at least a line in the Zen of Python than Pep8. But anyways, keep that in mind. It's kind of a nice thing to have. So uh, as this uh, tutorial series progresses, you can make uh, suggestions or recommendations, or if I do something that you have a better method of doing it, or you think you have something that's more, it's going to scale better, it's more easily readable, and it can scale better, because we're going to talk about how scale and readability often come into conflict with each other. Um, but if you've got a better idea or whatever, feel free to contribute to the series. So, uh, like I said before, the next few videos are just going to be more of kind of built-in things like generators and list comprehension, that kind of stuff. And then we're going to talk a little bit about standard libraries. We're going to be talking about multiprocessing and a few others like arg parse and stuff. Uh, and then we'll hop into object-oriented programming uh, because object-oriented programming is one of the best ways to make modular code. You don't have to use object-oriented programming, but it is one of the best ways, and it's certainly better than scripting, which is most of what we do on the channel. So anyways, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, stay tuned to the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.